Eric, please explain to the audience what you mean when you describe me as the J.D. Salinger of convention appearances. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to use my, <laughs> my reference. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the great J.D. Salinger, um, uh, an amazing author, right? Um, uh, he sort of dropped off the face of the earth and decided not to be bothered. I think because most people were trying to ask him to... Uh, help them with their lives and and uh, give them <laughs> guidance and he was um, he was because he wrote a very pivotal book called The Catcher in the Rye right right, right. and um, of course which changed many people's lives I um, absolutely I, I read that book when I was in sixth grade and then I reread that book when I was in my 30s um, just to, you know, and I probably, I think I've read it in between there sometime too. Just, but anyway, he, people kept trying to find him and would they finally go to his house and try to, you know, try, and, and just try to get him to come out and answer some questions. And, um, he was pretty much a recluse, uh, I, maybe a hermit. <laughs> um, but, uh, what unlike you know he wasn't like uh living in a cave somewhere and had given up life he had basically said i've i just i'd like to be by myself i i you know i i did some creative mm-hmm. stuff and i um if i'm going to be doing more it's going to be for myself and before i think i dragged you out of the safety of your <laughs> <laughs> your castle <laughs> um uh, it applied to you a lot more than it does today, but um, sure, sure. you also were this mystery, right? To to the mm. like fans would always ask me before you started to make appearances, um, you know, obviously on your own and with me. Um, right before right. that, they would say, "So tell me about Dan Green. Like, will Dan Green ever make an appearance? I have some stuff I'd really like to, to sign, and I really want to meet him. I want to ask him some questions." And I would say, "You know, um, he might. He, you know, he's he's busy. He's got a lot of stuff going on. You know, he's a dad. It's all this stuff too. And um, you know, maybe at some point, you never know. So I think that that the fans had this vision. They created this version of you, and it just made me think of J." J.D. Salinger. And I right, thought, right. You know, I thought, well, it's the same thing. Like maybe this is the way it's going to be. And, and they, they won't meet you, but they'll have this, this version of you in their head that is like <laughs> that. And, and of course, you know, uh, once again, a, a, a great creative mind, uh, that, that was also a reason I, I compared you to him, but that was oh, the that's reason fair. why. That's very flattering. Yes. Right. Right. My scarcity. Yes. And I had no concept that that was something that even had uh, an impact on on anyone, Mm -hmm. Um, which is just goes to show how blind I was to to any of that. It certainly was not. I was not trying to create that impression. No. And and I didn't think you were (laughs) I didn't think you were avoiding it because you thought it was beneath you. I didn't think you were avoiding. Not at all. No, no. And, and, you know, because sometimes people are like, oh, I don't want to do conventions. You know what? That's crazy stuff. And I'm like, "Okay, fine. Don't don't enjoy a really cool part of this great fandom (laughs) and, and community. But that wasn't that wasn't what I thought at all. I really, right. I explained it to anyone who asked me as, as I said, you, you, you had a lot of other things that you were working on and, you know, and life was also, a, you know, was part, part of your, your, was one of them. Yeah. yeah was one of them. Um, <laughs> yeah. and that, you know, who knows, maybe someday you would show up. So I right. think I got a lot of joy personally. I probably <laughs> even told you when you finally did make an appearance, uh, with yeah. me because, it was almost like you 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 believed what i said before you got there but when you experienced it firsthand it was really special like it was i, I saw i it saw your is. reaction yeah i i i see it every time we're together uh you know at events i see it every time i know i i know that it that it is a special experience but that first event that we did together um it was just one of those moments where you know you don't believe it until you see it and that's why it's so humbling and it's and it's so meaningful to to meet the you know the the the, the fans at the conventions and to get to talk to people it's because you know we don't get that working in a booth we don't we do not do not get it and 
it was just a very special it was a special time i i i i could see the smile on your face i could i i i could feel the warmth in your heart and i think it made total sense of like oh wait a second eric's not a hundred percent crazy maybe i should leave the castle and and come down and see what's going on in the kingdom <laughs> well, i love that framing yeah. and i uh, thanks for for filling that out and i bring this up for today's conversation because like last episode when we focused on the magician card which mm-hmm. represents eric in the heart of the cards imagery that we have for the show yep i represent i'm represented by the image of the hermit and Obviously, we do associate that with people who <laughs> aren't usually seen, who are recluses of sorts. Right. Um, and uh, that's going to be our focus for this conversation. And I think we should jump into it. How do you feel about that? I, I'm, I'm very interested to hear about why you are that character. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Welcome to The Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt Hey, this is Dan Green. And Eric Stewart. And this is episode 26 of The Heart of the Cards. 26. Yeah. Every time you say the next number, I get, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm just impressed that you and I can talk yeah. about things for 26 <laughs> episodes and still get along. <laughs> Many of these episodes are two-parters, too, for anybody who's new to the podcast. So it's really more like 50 episodes or so. That's true. No, um, no. We, I, I love it. Yeah, I love what, coming I, up on I love what anyway. we're doing. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just busting your chops. I love what we're doing. No, no. I know, I know that was a joke. Um, so uh, as I mentioned at the intro, we covered the Magician Tarot card mm-hmm. for you. Uh, anybody who didn't listen to the last episode, we're talking about the tarot, uh, not because we think it has a magic power to predict the future, but because it is a combination of images that anybody can relate to. And you can reflect on who you are or where you're at or who other people are or what the forces of nature are or whatever you like. Uh, it's it's an interesting way to think about things. Yeah, and and, and you also incorporated them into our personalities as hosts. Of, right. And, and right, who, exactly. who, who we are. Yes. I think anybody can find a, a little part of themselves somewhere in that deck at one point or another, uh, wherever they are in their lives. So, yeah. And with the magician, this is a character that is part of what they call the major arcana or arcana. And, and there's 22 of those cards in the tarot deck. The Hermit is another one of those cards, Mm -hmm. and I am going to read a brief description uh, from this website, Labyrinthos, or Labyrinthos, I suppose, and I really like the way they've worded it. I might uh, paraphrase a bit as we go. But uh, for newcomers, uh, the tarot can, when you have a card, it's usually in in a series of other cards, and some represent the past, and some represent where you are, and some represent what might happen in the future. Uh, But we're just dealing with the card itself, and each card essentially has two potential meanings, depending on the way the card is oriented, meaning is it upside down or right side up. So if it's right side up, it's the initial or affirmative meaning. If it's upside down, it's not necessarily the reverse of that, although that can sometimes be the case. Uh, but it is different than the initial meaning. Oh, can but I let's ask start you, with the initial can, meaning. Can I ask yeah, you a sure. question about that? So, so is it perspective on the dealer or the recipient? Yeah, the querent or the not the dealer, the recipient, as you put it. Okay, so right. okay, how so, it's, so th- how it's oriented to them Good. usually. I, j- but j- now, the, now, some people may practice this differently. Right. So some people who do tarot reads might do it with, you know, toward them. Okay. So I, that's I'm what not, I was just wondering. Sure like if I was exactly reading your, if right. I was reading the cards, would I be looking at them the way right. that they're facing me? Right. I just out of curiosity right. since I know nothing about Whatever it. Whatever orientation, you would both agree what's up and what's down. Okay, good. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead. I didn't, mean, so, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, that's, that's, that's a valid question. So... The hermit depicts an old man standing alone at the peak of the mountain while holding a lantern in one of his hands and a staff in the other. Hmm. The mountain denotes accomplishments, development, and success. Okay. The hermit tarot card refers to the level of spiritual knowledge that he attained and that he is ready to impart that knowledge to everyone. There is also a deep commitment 
he has to his goal and a solid awareness of the path that he is taking. Inside the lantern, you will notice a star with six points, which is also known as the Seal of Solomon. This symbol represents wisdom. The staff he holds depicts authority and power. Okay. Pretty flattering card to give myself. I, I was going to say. say, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in that, that that, of course, rings true. You know, it's interesting. That, so do they also consider him, is he a nomad? Is, does he travel alone? Because when I think of... When I think of hermit, I think of also someone being sure. uh, isolated and and uh, yeah, that's tucked exactly away what that means. somewhere. But right, if right. but if he's standing uh, on the top as, of a mountain and and mm-hmm. hold and holding this power, it's more of like he's a nomad. He's a he's a a ronin. He's a he's a he's a he's like he's he's an individual. He's a soloist. Yeah, he's yeah, n- he's, yeah. he's not I, uh, he's not hiding. Right. It's it it is a. A, a division from the rest that is not about hiding, but it's it's to me it suggests there are there are areas of experience that you can only attain on your own. No one else can follow you there, and a lot of people don't want to go there. Right, but it's still a good thing for you to do. It's not a retreat, right? Right um, now, now, but but as as we're touching on this, let me read the. The upside down. Oh yes, yes, right. The All other, right. The other way to look at it. Got it. Well, uh, well, uh, look, let me let me further fill out. Uh, what, I'll do the. I'll, I'll further fill out the positive, and, and then we'll get to the. Okay. The negative. All right. So, um, the, the hermit uh, is a seeker of knowledge that comes from within. The lonely wanderer in the path of the night. He searches for that which can only be gained with long periods of solitude. The inner voice. Okay. So that speaks to why the division needs to be there. To hear it, he must disconnect from the crowds whose voices and desires threaten to overcome his own. He walks through the dark night of his unconscious, guided only by the low light of the northern star, with his destination being his home, his self. Hmm. I really like the way that this uh, yeah. website breaks these things down. Yeah. So, uh, but, but now to get to the, the inverted meaning, as it's sometimes referred to... Um, When the hermit is reversed, you are perhaps in a situation where you'd like to be alone. There is nothing wrong about that. However, there is a possibility that your seclusion may become harmful to both yourself and others. Though the hermit sets forward with noble intention to search for his inner truth, his path inward may also be filled with great danger. Going inward may lead to madness and the abyss, For the unconscious is filled with images that he may not yet understand, lurking and waiting to lure you ever inside. Like a man that gets lost in his own dreams, the hermit may find himself stuck in a world that is his own, alone, trapped, unreal. You must learn to balance your need for the truth with connection to your fellow human. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Isn't this fun stuff? Just, I mean, aside from yeah, no, it really cool, is. Right? It really is, and and I mean, both knowing you the way I know you, uh, both of <laughs> you those you see both sides of that. Both, both <laughs> sides of that apply. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's very it's very interesting. I you know it's it's interesting that that supports the the name hermit more to me, right, right, than right. the other side of of the personality, right. But right. um, yeah, it's interesting that they talk about getting trapped in your own mind, and that and that yeah. place of being, you know, it's it's not necessarily the physical building you're locking yourself in. Right, it, it's right. locking it's yourself in the, the, the emotional side, and and that can also drive you mad. Um, it's interesting because that's. That's a not a way that I would ever have thought of the word hermit, but it makes perfect sense. Sure. Um, yeah, very isolating. Yeah, I mean, I I could see why that makes sense to you from the things that you've shared, both with me and also with the listeners. Um, sure, sure. Do you think that it's balanced? Do you think it's more? Oh, right. I'm right. wondering, like, where where do you see yourself in that? Uh, you know, is it more right. the positive? You know, was you know, has it transformed from one to the other? Sure. Yeah, those are all great questions. And I would say that first off, 
Again, I just want to speak to the people who are completely unfamiliar with the idea of the tarot, or who may have some reservations about tarot in general. This is not defining who I am or my future. This is a, no. a, a, a an exercise of reflection, and I would say that the t- that the tarot in in the hermit card does resonate with me. I see some similarities there, but I would also say that it doesn't entirely define no, me. No. I could, I, you know, in some ways I could also be a magician, right? And I could, um, and I could easily be the hermit. And you could be, a, exactly, exactly. And that's why I think what's really wonderfully universal about such an ancient uh, way of, of considering things. It's been around for centuries. Mm-hmm. And um, with the balance question, that's ongoing. Mm-hmm. And I think... Even over the course of a day, I might be on one side and then the other. Mm -hmm. I certainly can get trapped into these eddies or or mini (laughs) whirlpools or currents that that keep me trapped inside my own head in a way that really doesn't help anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think there have also been times where because I've been through a degree of inner reflection that sometimes I'm able to... Um, reflect back something to someone else who's going through something that they find helpful. Mm-hmm. Not all the time, right? But whenever that happens, I, I I'm grateful um, that uh, there was there's some benefit, you know, to be to be learned or to be you know at least considered. Um, currently, I, I shared with you uh, just yesterday. My family is going through a process of expecting a loss. Mm-hmm. A, a loved one is is passing away. They aren't gone yet but they soon will be and we all know that's happening and i think anybody who's been through that circumstance or is approaching that circumstance can understand that there is going to be a huge temptation to protect yourself to insulate maybe to withdraw within yourself and right and i th- think that's completely normal uh, and and just to be mindful of how much of that is is healthy to protect you and how much of that isn't helping you at all by isolating in a certain way. Right. Um, there's, there's a person I work with. Uh, she, she started as a student and uh, I've continued to work with her and she recently lost her mother within the last several months. And she is one of these people who, you know, is very concerned about getting everything done correctly. You might <laughs> understand mm-hmm. or relate to that a little mm-hmm. bit, Eric. Yes. Yes. And making sure that everything's taken care of. Right. Right. And I felt it necessary to just put across her radar that, you know, yes, those are all important things, but don't forget time for yourself. Yeah. You know, now that's very important. And what's interesting about the hermits, both sides of the hermits uh, personalities that you described that, that, that are definitely pieces that make sense. But the other factor and. I mean, you have other responsibilities to other people. You're the you're the sure. father of two children, and oh wait, oh that's who the, oh. there are two of them. There there are two, oh. not just one. That makes even more sense, right? God. Um, with that, that's why I have to keep on buying potato chips. Mom. Yeah, I know, right? Ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just, I just, I wonder, like, you really are not a hundred percent a hermit who focuses on your your alone journey. You are not no. alone. You are never even if you are locking yourself in your room. Like sure. The thing that that also I think is part of the rescue is you do mm. have those people to take care of. And to interact oh, absolutely. with and to love and to be loved by. So sure. Uh, sure. You know, I mean you know, God forbid that the, that they weren't they weren't part of your life. Like if you were by yourself, that oh yeah, that that if, the jur- the journey of of having this yeah. this 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 personality that could be related to these two sides I've, of the hermit yeah. m- would be a totally yeah. different. You'd be a different, a totally different person. I've not recently, but uh, years ago, I often thought. What would have happened if no one had survived? Exactly, and I lost all three. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my the children and my wife. I don't know if I would have, how I would have, if I would have survived that. I mean, 
I mean, I might have, I might not have died. But no, that's different no, than but actually, but you know, but what, what would, yeah, where, where would you be today? What would be the, you know, and and thank goodness we don't have to think about that. Uh, you don't have to live that. But, but it is interesting. Well, I, I, I also remember, yeah, just continuing to support what you're saying. I remember saying at the time that having, you know, that children present you with an imperative, mm-hmm. right? And as much as you'd like to get hung up on just who you are and what you're going through, there's a you know, point at which you just can't only do that. That's right. Know? I mean, there's there's, there's there, something yeah. about there's you know we don't want to feel like the only way we can justify uh, getting up in the morning is because we need to take care of someone, right? That's not that's right. Not you want what, more than that? That's not great. Right. It's right. not great. But there is definitely something, and it's a positive thing that when there are people in your life. That you are, yes. you know, me taking, you know, taking care of my yes. wife as she's going through her her her, her battle, um, which you do wonderfully. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's it it also puts things into perspective so where you do go down that dark path and you sure. find yourself in that dark place, which both of us have in different ways. Yeah. Um, Everybody does. We it helps us get out. For it sure. just it helps us get out. Sometimes it's a relief. It is. Sometimes I prefer to think about other people's problems. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting that that's that those are two things that go along with the hermit, because as much as I, you know, joked around about the J.D. Salinger thing and you sort of being this, you know, this <laughs> this, this this mysterious this unicorn. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I I I never would ever describe you as um, this selfish um you know, mm, uh, like mm-hmm. individual who had who who narcissist. What I I never like. I'm pretty I'm pretty approachable. You're approachable, but you're also very giving. And this is not the I love mm-hmm. Dan Green episode, but but I know <laughs> I know that that softer side. Um, sure. And I I don't I don't think that your journey has ever been only thinking of yourself ever. Mm-hmm. 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 You still carry yourself with the confidence of doing what you do mm. and doing what you mm. do well, but you're mm. not leaving people in the dust. That's not your style. Well, I'm, it's nice to hear. I, I think that if if I could choose a balance, I would like it to be that. As mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you're saying that about me. As yeah, I don't know how true that is, but I'm glad at least it appears that way. And and I think there's also uh, to speak to some positive elements of of what it takes to not listen only to the voices around you this idea of the hermit choosing some form of tuning out the noise mm-hmm. s- to focus on what's resonating is true within um i think that is really one of the most important things i've ever done to whatever extent i've achieved it you know that's variable mm-hmm. i'm not saying that i'm the best at it but it really is important whoever you are, to get an understanding of what it is that rings true for you, what your footing is. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be sources of influence and authority that you will be uh, considering. Uh, When you're young, obviously, you often do what your parents tell you. And then as you grow older, you start making your own decisions. And that's only healthy. And they don't always contradict each other, right? But (laughs) there usually is some sort of sorting out period. And having having that uh, ability to take things in, you know, synthesize, people think of that as kind of a modern word. Because maybe because of synthesizer music or Mm -hmm. something like that. But that really just means to take in other stuff and, and, and... distill it in a sense, you know, and then incorporate it in a, in, a, in a new way. Right. And I think you, you need time to, to be with yourself, to honestly do that. Yeah. Uh, and by honestly, I mean to, to be honest with yourself in, mm-hmm. in terms of what that means. And so, so, um, and I'm yeah. sorry, I mean to interrupt. Yeah. Continue. No, I was just going to finish off the idea. You know, this is, I think, a lot of what adolescence is about and even young adulthood. You know, are you just are you just taking on some attitudes or and maybe it's stuff that you would agree with anyway, but are you are you simply mimicking it? Right. Or it does it is it really resonating? You know? Right. So so because you also said that that so many of these characters could apply to so many different people. And you know, Absolutely. there are things that, all of them can apply to one person. Exactly. So so then I ask you, 
what what makes these two characters, the magician mm-hmm. and the hermit, work in tandem together the way that I think you were also <laughs> representing the 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 symbiotic relationship that we have right as right. people so what makes these two characters gel right so i think if you can simplify the magician as someone who combines the forces around them from heaven above and the earth below mm-hmm. right the magician is pointing one hand to the heavens and one hand to the earth, and they have the elements on the table before them, and they have the symbol of infinity uh, uh, hanging above them to refer to the infinite combinations that all these powers and elements uh, can provide. Mm-hmm. Um, that essentially is a character who is, like I just said, he's synthesizing, right? Using elements to create something new, and that come from that come from a world that they have command over, but that is external. Right. Whereas the hermit has a similar sense of command of the internal. And, which is not to say that you don't have any sense of that at no, all. No, I mean, no, no. Well, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, uh, you're but, trying but, to draw I, the I, parallels between the characters. The, the distinction, and the, right. The, the, right. the distinction between the characters and the, and the people. I... I, I I know that as you're describing the magician, you're not only talking about me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I'm trying exactly. to, I guess my question is kind of hard. Yeah, but I think it's true. Yeah. I, but I think it's true. And then also, you know, maybe maybe I, I, I shouldn't just try to cobble together an answer because when I chose those cards, I wasn't necessarily conscious uh, beyond the fact that I thought that they were somewhat appropriate to our personality types and also somewhat visually representative, right? But I think it's true without, you know, trying to create a story that doesn't fit or stretching right. the truth at all. I think it's true that when you look at what we've done with Andromeda, um, you're much more of the, hey, let's get it done guy. Mm-hmm. And I'm much more of the, hey, what about this idea guy? Yeah. You know, at least so far. Sure. In terms of crossing the gods and, you know, um, the storytelling elements that we're going to do. It's like I'm, I'm pulling a seed out of my interior imagination. Yep. And, and you're more on the team of, great, and let's get it out there. Yeah, and if we were literal, you, you, you would be locked in your studio drawing. Or, or do it like you oh, would, you, you, you which would is be, very, which is very isolating. That I, is what I do. Yeah, I know. And yeah. that's why that. Made, no, you said literal. Yeah, that's why yeah, I use the word literal. Yeah, because See, the, I'm good with words. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the other side of that is, so you might have picked these characters because they were similar to our personalities, whatever. And they also looked like they, they could be played by us and they yeah. represented us. Right, right. But what's very interesting, and I believe that things happen sometimes for a reason. Um, yeah. Yeah is that when you do dig deeper into what makes these two characters tick, there are many things that make sense of why you picked them, even if you didn't mm-hmm. know it. Exactly. So exactly. Th- so that's kind of cool. I fully, I fully cool. resonate with that. And that's kind of cool. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Uh, and yeah, I mean, and because we both have a little bit of each of those characters in us, um, right. You know, there's definitely the blurred lines in between where they cross sure. over. So that's kind of sure. cool. That's really kind of cool. Yeah. Well, and I will reflect that observation to, I don't do the tarot all the time. I don't do it daily. I don't do it weekly. I don't do it monthly. Mm-hmm. When I was uh, in my twenties and thirties, uh, maybe I do it like now and then just kind of for fun or, or for reflection. Um, but I recently had a reading with a friend of mine, and she didn't even put it in terms of a traditional tarot reading, um, but uh, uh, she used different terminology, but it was very much the same process of having cards that all mean something in a certain orientation and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And when, when you do that sometimes, uh, as you're making these connections and talking about what they could mean... Sometimes you have those moments of, of realization or revelation or at least consideration, just like what you said, where you didn't consciously mean for something to resonate in a certain way, and yet it's as though the cards are revealing a truth. Mm-hmm. So I get why people associate that power to the cards, but that's not really what the cards are doing. That's what right. you're doing with the cards. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it is a very cool – it's like, oh, wait – 
this makes sense all along. And that's fun for, too, as or, a, or, or, or or even in bigger ways. Yeah, yeah, and and that's fun too as a storyteller, as a you know, as a songwriter, oh, sure, sure. as a whatever. We we look at this and uh, you, you know you 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 ro- romanticize the, the 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 characters in it. You 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 know you you pick these two things, and now there's a story that goes along with them. And I think that's what's cool about. Uh, reading into these, and yes, whether you believe in the in, in the tarot or not, or, or 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 horoscopes or whatever your thing, um, I mean that's not that's not my that's not my thing. I I I find those, right. I don't do I don't do horoscopes, I, I but think, I don't judge people who right, do. I don't. Yeah, exactly. If that's your thing, that's your thing. Um, but putting a story together with that, right? So yeah. to, you know, oh, it's my birthday. What does that mean? Oh, it means I need to go and do this. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to, in my brain, create this right. scenario, this story that that's what I need to do today. That's Or what if I did do that today? Or do I really? It's telling right. me to invest something. Should I be doing that? Um, it's It almost triggers right. your, your creativity. Yeah, and I think I've mentioned this before. I don't know if it was in our last episode or when we were talking on the phone previously, but when you lay these cards out, they're... They represent archetypal ideas, experiences, what have you. And you lay them out in a timeline. And that in itself kind of tells a little story. I forget who it was that said there was only a certain amount of stories, you know, and we're just all kind of retelling the same stories over and over and over. And I, it, it's the truth that you see in the stories that makes them meaningful to you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know? and yeah. And, and it's, it's like, it's like, I, I think of like when we used to play with, uh, well, you, you might still have some action figures lying around your house. I'm, I'm not saying you, but you might still. Oh, tons. Uh, <laughs> tons. Um, but like, I never played with my toys in the s- stories they were from. I, right. I always would just grab, like, even if I had like a GI Joe and someone from Star Trek, they were not from those two shows. They were two other characters I had created in my brain, and that was what I was going to do in my story, right, as I was playing with them. Um, it's like the the cards. You put two cards yeah. down on the table with these figures on them. My goodness. Right. Even if you don't read into what they're supposed to mean, that could start a, a, your story writing. Oh hell yeah! You could just sure. create I, something from that. I mean, and and using I, using yeah, items yeah. like that, whether you know whether it's cards or or um you know uh, whatever it is, you know you've got a stuffed animal yeah, sitting yeah. there or or an or whatever it could be. It could be a pile yeah. of clothes and be like, oh, it's the it's the laundry blob or uh, you know just to, <laughs> you know I love yeah. that those that those things can start the process. Absolutely. I used to do this thing with Tony, Anthony Hayden Salerno. Um, and uh, again, this was back in our, in our 20s or so. And we called it Macho Taro. And we just had one question and then we would select one card from the deck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, wouldn't do, we wouldn't do a whole spread, which takes more time. Right. But yeah, it's exactly that. It's like, okay, I'm going to apply this idea to this idea. Yeah. How does that feel? <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I think it's, a, yeah. I think it's great. And I do think it's great that you created these characters that you drew these characters um they're, they're well i didn't create these characters i interpreted them yes but i mean our versions of them you created the the, yes. the art for the for these characters that sort of fit with yeah. what we're doing um it's a fun thing i mean there is an irony of the fact that we have cards on a show <laughs> the heart of the cards <laughs> comes from the show yeah. yes yeah there's definitely a theme um but yeah no i i love them and and yeah you know if one day you do decide to make a full deck that would be really cool i'm not telling you to do that you have way too many other things on the andromeda productions <laughs> uh, uh you know whiteboard to get done <laughs> yeah, but it's also fitting you know the heart of the cards uh and this is another reason why i went with the tarot idea is we're just having a conversation about life we're not predicting anyone's future no 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 you know no. and uh yeah it's sim- and the same is true with any any tarot deck it can't it's not going to make your future yeah. you make your future you know but it can help you think about it yep yeah well thanks eric uh this was a fun conversation yeah and uh i i always appreciate any time i get to talk with you you too uh 
And thanks to all of our listeners and followers. Uh, we are so flattered whenever you mention that to us when we see you at conventions. If you've been listening to the podcast and the kind things that you have to say, spread the news. Uh, and uh, we would love to have even more people included uh, and following us uh, from week to week. And we'll be coming up on our one-year anniversary at the end of August, oh. which is right around the corner. So, And we have some uh, guests coming up. We have Darren uh, Dunstan. Yeah. And I think we're also going to be talking to Lisa Ortiz soon. Yeah. Uh, there's some people we met at uh, MCM in London that uh, I'm really looking forward to to talking with more. I, I think the, uh, the fans will a- appreciate uh, those conversations as well. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and then as always, uh, the most interesting thing for us is to not only have a conversation with each other, but to share these things with you and, and have that conversation continue in moments when we get to see you in person or hear your comments uh, either online or, or on our social media. Uh, it, it's, it's really a wonderful conversation to be a part of. So thanks again, Eric. Thank you, Dan. And thanks to everyone who's joining us every week for a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. Thanks for listening to The Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor, and on behalf of Adromeda Productions, we wish you well. Andromeda, always a sound choice.